I've done two weeks of setting the stage. The analytic geometry where mathematics takes place and the universe of, func universe of functions that we want to use with the idea of a model to use functions to describe the world. Now let's actually get into the calculus itself. I want to start with a motivating problem, a problem that I will make central to the course. Calculus arose from solving real, tangible, important problems. So let's start with one of those problems. And I want to start with population dynamics. How do we measure and understand population growth and decay? There are many populations I might be interested in. Human populations are obviously important. Any ecosystem is a complicated in interacting net of various species populations with systems like competition, symbiosis, parasit parasitism, and predation. Forest management depends on the growth of tree population, to say nothing of the related population of other plants, animals, and tree parasites. The study of disease can be seen as a population study, either through the growth of the agent of the disease or the growth of the infected or the recovered or the immune populations. Population dynamics are behind many important natural and human challenges. What questions might I ask of a population? First, how do I encode population growth as a function? Which functions work in which situations? How do I know? Second, what factors affect the growth of a population? How can I change the environment or situation to affect the growth? Third, what is the long-term behavior of the population? Will it keep growing? Will it level off? Will it decay to nothing? Will it oscillate between some upper and lower bounds or something else more complicated? And finally, what is the growth rate? How fast is the population changing day to day or year to year? These are all questions I'd like to answer over the course of the term. I'll keep returning to this population question as a way to frame the mathematics as it unfolds. And I hope you find this a compelling way to approach the discipline. And I hope it makes the technical techniques feel motivated and worthwhile. For now, I want to start with regression and percentage growth. I want to consider it a data set for a population year by year. With this data, I've calculated the percentage growth from year to year. I've also calculated the averages of those 12 percentage growth rates. This gives me an idea of how the population behaves. There are obviously some differences, good years and bad years, 31.6% or 12%. However, there does seem to be some consistent behavior. This population increases by something near 20% per year. Percentage growth is approximately not a bad way to understand this particular population. Now, let me do a regression with it. I've put the data from the previous slide onto a graph, with time, the independent variable, on the x-axis and population on the y-axis. I've drawn a function through these points. This is a curving up function, and there are several such functions to choose from. It might be a quadratic or a cubic, but I'm going to assume that this regression matches an exponential function. Now let me give you some justification for this choice of an exponential regression. Let's go back to the data and look at how long it takes for a population to double. From year zero, just over 1,000, it takes four years to cross 2,000. From year one, just over 1,200, it again takes four years to cross 2,400. From year two, at 1,372, it again takes four years to cross 2,654, the doubling of that value. I can continue, but it looks like this behavior is mostly consistent. This function doubles in four years, or maybe a little bit less than that. What is doubling? Well, it's multiplying by two. But repeatedly multiplying by two is an exponential function. If the starting value is a, and the doubling period is d, then the function is just p of t equals a two to the t over d. After d years, the exponent is one, so the result is two a, it's doubled. After another d years, the exponent is 2, and the result is 2 squared a. After another d years, the exponent is 3, so the result is 2 cubed a. And what is happening here is this function is exactly measuring doubling multiplying by 2 every d years. In this case, 
The doubling period is, by my guess, four years, and the starting value is 1032. The function is therefore p of t equals 1032 times 2 to the t over 4. This is indeed the function I used for the regression graph, and it matches pretty well. As an aside, I mentioned that I would usually use the new number e as the exponential base. I can do that here with a couple exponential tricks. I can write 2 as e to the ln 2, since the exponential and the logarithm cancel each other out. They are inverses, after all. So then I can replace 2 with e to the ln 2 in the general form. And finally, the laws of exponents can help me simplify this sequence of two exponents. What I get is p of t equals a e to the t times ln 2 divided by d, written as an exponential base e. In calculus, this is indeed the form of the function I would prefer to work with. So let me end that little bit of an aside about using base e. So an exponential regression fits the population. That leads me to an interesting observation. In the data, I used percentage growth to understand the system. I concluded that the system was somewhat consistent, growing on, an, on average at about 18.83% per year, albeit with some notable variation. In the regression, I matched an exponential function. But this is the same data. That means there should be a connection between percentage growth and exponential functions. What is that connection? I'm going to answer this question a little bit in the next video, and fully by the end of the term, but this question gets down to the heart of calculus. Percentage growth is a growth rate, and regression gives a function. How do I describe growth rates? How do these growth rates relate to functions? This is what calculus is all about.